Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Data here with breaking news in the NHL. As the Montreal Canadiens have signed Leas Anderson to a one-year contract, paying him just about league minimum 775k. Now, a lot of signings going on in the NHL. Hope you're all having a wonderful start to Canada Day weekend and the free agent frenzy in the NHL. But I wasn't going to go live for every single one. But as a Canadiens fan, I really wanted to break this one down. A lot of you probably wondering who is Leas Anderson. Should we be excited about about this signing my instant reaction and analysis of it all is absolutely it is even better than low risk high reward it is zero risk and decent to medium reward you know very 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 minimal risk associated with this deal and it's go and we're going after the canadians we we're going after a guy who the kent the not kent hughes the jeff gordon era of management in new york had this guy, drafted this guy seventh overall in 2017 draft. Now, a lot of Canadians fans were saying, go after Vitaly Kravtsov, go after some of these guys, Jeff Gordon's guys who didn't pan out, who teams are looking to trade. Go after those guys. And now this is someone else who is no longer with the, the Rangers, went to the LA Kings and fell out of favor, basically has fallen out of the NHL. This is his last grasp. The Montreal Canadiens, whether it be Jeff Gordon, Kent Hughes, Mark Bergevin, uh, Pierre Gauthier, Bob Gainey, whoever the GM of the Canadians is, the Canadians seem to have a history of extending the olive branch to these players and giving them one last shot and seeing what can they do. Just players that come to mind just when I'm really thinking about it quickly. I think of Alex Semin. I think of Ilya Kovalchuk. I think of Alexander Radulov. Sometimes it has worked out. Sometimes it has not. But if the Canadians get Leah Sanderson, the former seventh overall pick, in the 2017 draft for league minimum, no risk. I love this move. Now the Montreal Canadiens get Leas Anderson. He is 24 years of age. He'll turn 25 by the beginning of the season. When he was drafted seventh overall in 2017, he was coming off some very impressive numbers in the Swedish SHL. In his draft year, he had scored 19 points in 42 games. The next year after that, he scored 14 points in 22 games. He came to the AHL, 14 points in 25 games. Never really found his footing in the NHL. Never had the greatest opportunity either, I do have to say. Two points in seven games back to the AHL where he did pretty well. Six points in 42 games. 18-19 is probably what killed him the most. He was a negative 13 with the Rangers. Went back to Sweden, tried to find his game. Almost point per game there. Comes back to the NHL again. Only one assist in 17 games. He's had a lot of tr struggles trying to get his game into the North American style, perhaps, because he seems to do quite well in the SHL, that European uh, system versus the North American maybe playing with his mind. 11 points in 19 games when he went back to uh, Juve Siete Ot, HV71 in SHL in 2020-21. Comes back to the NHL again now with the LA Kings, as the Kings had acquired him in a deal for the sec a second round pick in 2020. Uh, he was initially traded his draft pick rights were his trade as well but he was traded to the kings for a second round pick will Cooley, and will Cooley has turned into a good pick for the rangers so they are happy to have him off the books uh and good point here from uh paul aflam hockey culture dude throw yeah he threw his silver medal in the crowd during the world championship so i think there's a lot of issues in terms of his maturity in terms of him being able to adapt his game to the north american style i am not gonna go ahead and make excuses for what lisa anderson did at all but i am gonna say what i said initially at the start of this video this is better than low risk high reward this is zero risk a player who has shown a lot of potential in his game in the past and he's coming off of an incredible year in the in the ah as well previously in the ahl 20 points in 36 games five points in 13 games 17 points in 15 games six points in four games gets a full season in the ahl 59 points 31 goals 59 points in 67 games even if he's only a guy who plays in laval in the ahl and then comes up once in a while who knows if this could be the re revitalization of his career that he has been looking for i don't see his ceiling as his his original as high as his original ceiling was his original ceiling when he was drafted seventh overall would have been to be a first line centerman i probably see his ceiling now probably something more like a third line centerman but to get that for free to pick that up 
just on league minimum to say a prove it to me type of deal in the Canadians culture, in their history where they've given those chances to players before and have seen it sometimes do well, sometimes not so much. Alex Semen, Alex Radulov, Ilya Kovalchuk, now Elias Anderson, the Swedish centerman who will be 25 years of age come the beginning of the season. Now, Lee Sanderson, looking a bit deeper on the numbers here, he has not been great win in the NHL at all. Over the last few years, over three years of weighted average data, he's in the ninth percentile of projected wins above replacement. That essentially, if you don't know what wins above replacement is, is just his value in in, in uh, relation to players who are replacement level, which Leah Sanderson is basically a replacement level player himself. So it's hard to provide much more value than he gives when he's one of those people but uh going on here is even strength offense has been good in the small shows that he has been able to have in his limited fourth line minutes he draws penalties as well and his offense hasn't been horrible as you can see by the goals and primary assists per 60 but he's non-existent on defense he's not playing with good teammates nor is he playing as high levels of competition it's the ah i'd love to see this card but in the AHL, because in the AHL, as I just mentioned, 59 points in 67 games. Going back to the comments here, I see one from Pio Laflamme. Pio says, uh, let me pull it up right here. Great player, but bad attitude. If someone in the locker room can contain him, he'll be a solid add for the Rocket. I, I agree. I can't speak to what his attitude is nowadays in the last couple of years. I know that it was an issue with the Rangers. I know that it was an issue when he was in the World Championship. I can't speak for how he is now at 25 years of age, going on 25 years of age. But I, I, I do see the potential for... Uh, some hesitance around him. If I go to his hockey reference card, I'm just curious to see what his ice time has been like in the NHL when he's played in the league. Very, very limited minutes. With the Kings, he played one game of eight and a half minutes this season. In 21-22, he played uh, 20 games, averaging 10 and a half minutes. So he hasn't really gotten much opportunity to do much, but he hasn't really done too much either when he's been out there again his greatest sample size the greatest idea of what kind of game does he play came this past season with the uh, la kings ahl affiliate where he scored 31 goals and 59 points in 67 games he was still a negative 17 though he's been a negative player pretty much wherever he's gone excuse me, gone throughout his career outside of Europe. So again, do I think that he could become something huge? Are they going to unlock that first line potential? No, but I love this move for the Canadians. He's one of Jeff Gordon's guys. He was drafted seventh overall for a reason at that time. The potential is there. Could he become a, a, a solid, consistent third line centerman in the NHL? I do think that that's a possibility. Rangers are definitely hurting that. It wasn't a great class around him, but they could have taken a Casey Middlestad and Owen Tippett, Gabe Velarde, Martin Nate, Chas, Nick Suzuki, and the Rangers uh, reached a little, maybe not reached, but they went ahead and took Elias Anderson at number seven and didn't quite work out for them. So looking at the Montreal Canadiens situation now, how does that, how do things line up in the Habs organization? If you look at their current forward depth, and of course, keep in mind that they'll have 10.5 million to play with, with, um, with what's his name, Carey Price on LTIR. Their current top 12 forwards are pretty full, I do have to say. I would think this offseason that Christian, Christian Dvorak is a candidate to leave. I would think that Mike Hoffman is someone who the Canadians are trying to move. Yoel Armia as well. Let's say, forget this next season. Let's say they move some of these guys to the deadline. The 2024-25 Canadians, I could see Lewis Anderson making a push into that lineup. Suzuki, Caulfield, Anderson, Doc, Gallagher, Newhook, uh, Evans, Slavkovsky, uh, Philip Massar, who knows, and then maybe some spots in that on that fourth bottom six and like that for Lisa Anderson, longish term. So uh, Ryan says, waste of a roster place for the AHL. Maybe he will throw his medal again. Again, we're going back to when he was, what, 17, 18. I don't excuse what he did at all, but I do think that he is a different person than than he, than who he was when he was a teenager. Now he's going on 25 years of age. I can't speak to whether he's gotten better or worse, but I'm just saying, keep an open mind. Maybe it's, it's uh, he's... I don't want to say a changed man. It's not like he did anything egregious, but it wasn't a good show of what his attitude was. The Laval Rocket, I don't think that they're really hurting for lineup spots. I think the... the um... I think the Rocket have the space to have a guy like Leah Sanderson in their lineup. I wasn't going to, I didn't have that ready, but let me go ahead and get it. Laval Rocket roster. Let's see, where does he really fit into the Laval Rocket? I think there's definitely space for him, especially if guys like Raphael Harvey Pinard are going up to the NHL. Um, 
Where he was a great first team in NHL 20. Matt, yeah, I know what you're talking about, Gen Z. He was really good on NHL, uh, previous NHL games in franchise mode. Anthony Richard is gone. Um, Raphael Harvey Pinard is going to be in the NHL. Alex Belzeal is gone. Corey Schooneman is gone. Uh, I know Tyler Pitlick is gone, but he wasn't really here. Um, Justin Barron's going to be up in the NHL. I think there's a little bit of space. I don't think it's a waste of a roster spot. And you know what? Worst case, he's on league minimum. You, you, you know, you tell him don't come anymore. Mutual termination. Worst, worst case scenario. But I think that Leah Anderson knows that this is his last chance. He's coming off of almost point per game in the AHL. He had a great year. There's a very little market for him right now. Uh, I think that he knows that he has to perform, whether it be in Laval or in Montreal, if he gets the opportunity. I would be very surprised if his attitude from 2017 and 2018 is still going to be what holds him down in 2023, 2024. I would be shocked. Like Speaking as someone who's played a lot of youth hockey my as well myself, I know a lot of those guys. I played with a lot of those types of guys, and I know them now, and being around the same age as Leah Anderson myself. And I know that those guys are completely different people. So, and I know also some of them that are exactly the same. So it really, it, it's it's out of my uh, out of my control. I don't think that we should judge him according to just a bad show of his attitude. Now, mind you, if you, if we're talking about people who have committed criminal acts, things like that, there's a totally different uh, conversation to be had. But Lisa Anderson, he was a bad sport. He had a really bad team attitude in 2017 and 2018. I think that there's a chance for him to be able to show himself to have changed a little bit. And I think they had a good year in Ontario. He showed himself finally able to do what he had been drafted for. Now, can he reach what his new heights would be, which is likely something like capping out at third line NHL centerman? I could see that. And the Canadians have zero risk in doing so. Jeff Gordon takes a guy that he has believed in. He gives him a league minimum deal one year. You do it. Great. You don't. No skin off my nose whatsoever. Especially the Canadians that had so many injury issues. Why not have someone who is fringe NHL capable to be in that role moving forward? So that's just about it for me, ladies and gentlemen. Breaking down the Leah Anderson signing here by the Montreal Canadiens. Breaking news here in the NHL. One year, 775K. Uh, I wasn't planning on going live. I know there's a lot that's been happening in free agency. A lot more we could talk about and break down. But I think that uh, New York Rangers masterclass, yeah, by Landon. You know, they they got they got to move him out for a second round pick, and that second round pick has been doing well in their organization. So I like that for the Rangers as well. Marc Dumont, let me see what uh, Marc Dumont had a good tweet here. Maybe we'll have maybe maybe a breakout like that. Be crazy Gen Z. I like this a lot. Says Mac Zumo. It's not a groundbreaking move, but Anderson was great in the AHL last year, and I rather see the Rocket lines full of players that still have some potential rather than thirty-year-old mercenaries like in the past. I think that's a good point as well. I would rather have Leah Anderson at twenty-five with a bit of potential potential than Laval filling it out just because uh, Jean Guy from Saint Sauveur and uh, Raphael from uh, Abitibi de Litzman or whatever is going to be plucked because they're local guys. I would rather have guys like Leah Sanderson in the lineup, right? Uh, can you see if Jeff Gordon drafted him? Well, I he was, the Jeff Gordon was, I forget if he was, the, was he the GM or the president of Hockey Ops? I think it was GM, right? Uh, Jeff Gordon was the GM at that time. If you want me to pull it up, I could find it for you if you want to see confirmation. Jeff Gordon. I forget what his exact role with the uh, Rangers was. Was he GM? Let me let me get that for you before we close it out here. Right, I know a lot of people on the Canadians, uh, Canadians fans said, let's go after Vitaly Kravtsov. Gorton knows about him, stuff like that. They did not in the end, but they get to have... Um, uh, yeah, he was the GM. They get to have uh, uh, Leah Sanderson. Here you go, GDM. So right here, on July 1st, 2015, Gordon replaced Glenn, Sa Glenn Sather to be on the 11th GM in Rangers history. So yes, he was the GM during the 2017 draft. There you go. So Jeff Gordon, he gets one of his guys back now as the president of Hockey Ops of the Montreal Canadiens. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me this afternoon. Leave a like if you enjoyed the breakdown. Subscribe for more breaking news and analysis in the real world of hockey, as well as our franchise mode series, our career simulations, the David Reinbacher NHL 23 Habs career 
Warrior Simulation just went live yesterday. So that would be a great video for you to check out. Or it's the day before. It's already blurring together. If you want to see a bit more about David Reinbacher's career with the Habs, he was drafted fifth overall this year. If you want to get an idea of how his career pans out, we simulated a full 20 plus years. And you can go and see a little bit of an idea how that'll look. Who will sign Bertuzzi? A lot of teams in the mix, I would imagine, right now. I would have to do a bit more research before I throw out a name. I did have, you know, I, in, in the free agency live stream yesterday, I was I called Nedeljkovic to the Penguins and I called Kalorn to the Ducks, I believe. But I'll stop at my, my record being up. I won't make another prediction here. Thank you for joining me this afternoon. Have yourselves a lovely rest of the weekend. We'll be talking soon as breaking news happens in the NHL. But let me know in the comments down below or in the Discord server link in the description. What do you think about the Leas Anderson deal? Do you think that there is still potential left in him? Is it indeed a waste of a roster place? I think it is well worth the very extremely minimal risk. So have yourselves a great weekend and we'll be talking soon. Thanks, everybody.